Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the bomber. That's their part number 3023-4-633. This is a single acting half surf. <clears throat> pardon me, let's start over. It's a double acting half surface spring hinge from Bomber. And it's not really all that uncommon, um, meaning it's half surface, which uh, are certainly less common than the standard, what would be a 3029 uh, in this size. Uh, so not unheard of as a half surface, and we'll talk about what that means. So it's a 3023. It's a half surface, double acting spring hinge. The dash four is a reference to the size, but the dash four is more of a reference to the door thickness that you can fit with the hinge. What door thickness is compatible with this double acting hinge. So to turn that in reverse, what is your door thickness? That then dictates um, or prescribes the dash number, three, four, five, etc. The 633 in the part number, that means satin brass. Uh, it means more than that, that actually. It means the hinge is made of steel and that it is in a satin brass finish. So when this hinge is in the box, it's going to come out like this. Um, you know, you might see pictures of it like this. This hinge, because it's half surface, is unusual when you look at it and it's not in its natural state. Okay, so let me put it in its natural state. This is what the hinge is going to look like. Okay, this probably better this way. That's the jam. Your door is here. The half surface part means that the leaf that is mounted to the door is surface mounted. Okay, the term surface. Well, the term half surface refers to what the leaf that gets attached to the door is doing or where it's placed. When it's a full mortise, it's mortise to the edge of the door. When it's a full surface, you know, both leaves are, when it's a full mortise, both leaves are mortised uh, to the jam and to the door. When it is a half something, half surface, half mortise, it's always referring to what's happening on the leaf uh, that attaches to the door. Half surface means the door leaf is surface mounted. Half mortise means the leaf to the door is mortised. Then of course there's full surface and there are full surface spring hinges from Bomber. Um, so when you put this the way that it would normally be when the door is in the resting or closed position, you know, that's what it's going to look like. Okay. Not like, you know, this, you know, that, that, that would be when your door is open to 180 degrees. This leaf back here, that goes to the, um, that goes to the uh, jam, is what that does. Okay. You can install this really any way that you like. Upside down, you should be installing it with the tension collars pointed towards the top of the door. Install it either way that you like. Whichever leaf can act as the door leaf, whichever leaf you like can act as the jam leaf. Okay. Um, so this is a 3023. It's a double acting spring hinge, um, half surface. It's a four inch size, and that means that it is capable of handling a door thickness range from seven eighths to inch and a quarter. So when a client calls for a double acting spring hinge, the first question is always, how thick is the door? Well, it's inch and a half. Okay, well, the four won't work. Well, could you make it work? I suppose. It's not meant to work. You'd have to mortise out that door severely so it can fit into this pocket. The right one, you, the correct one you need is a five inch hinge for an inch and a half thick door. Inch and three quarter thick doors, those are generally going to be a six inch hinge or maybe an eight inch hinge. I don't know that a 3023 is made in an eight inch, however. Um, so it's always, what's the thickness of the door? And then that dictates what that number will be. 633 in the part number, as I said earlier. It's made of steel, and it is in a satin brass type finish. Okay. For every uh, hinge that you order, you will get screws. They are certainly assuming this is going to be a wood application. I can't imagine this would be a metal application in a half surface. So you're going to get wood screws and a complementary finish. For every order that you place, you'll get at least one tension rod, and you're going to need the tension rod so that you can set the tension set the tension on the uh, on the spring that's there okay and you're going I want to back up uh, to what I had just said you're, you're not able to use these leaves in either direction yeah definitely not 
um, you're going to yeah you are definitely not going to um, they they are they are physically the same dimensions but not compatible you'll 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 sort it out because one leaf if I were to put the hinge in the opposite direction and I were to increase that spring tension that leaf is going to fly open when I set that tension the leaf is literally going to move with me when I put it back here against what would be the jam and I then increase my tension I'll be able to insert my tension pin down here and it will stay right where it needs to be Take a look, closer look at that. So what we do here is we'll insert that tension rod, and as we turn it clockwise, which is in the direction of the arrow, and we drop a pin, a tension pin, down in this hole, it will then rest against that shoulder. That's when you're going to have the uh, tension uh, set on the spring hinge. And it will work on the same, on the opposite side of the door, where you'll drop a tension pin down in here, that will then give you tension on this item. Okay, <clears throat> that's how that will work. It will only work in one direction. You can't install it either way. If you have uh, doors that are, you know, the if you, if you had a pair of doors, is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> Let's say on this door you'd want the leaf on this side. Well, to have it on the other side of the door, you'll do this, where the tension collars will be pointed towards the towards the ground. Um, now in terms of the finishes, lots of finishes available, let's switch to the screen view and take a closer look at not only the available finishes, but all of the supporting documentation. Okay, so here's the item that we are indeed looking at. Half surface, non-template, that means the location of the holes in the leaf does not match any sort of pattern, it's where bomber puts the holes for the screws. Non-handed, sure, it can be used as I just described with the tension collar up or pointed down. Made of steel, there's your thickness range, 7 eighths to inch and a quarter. Then they have some guidelines, um, minimum door height, 6 foot 8. Um, maximum weight for two hinges, 60 pounds or 75 pounds with three hinges. Door width, 28 inch or 36 inch. Uh, is what's happening here, depending on the quantity of hinges. Now, people will say, well, can I use it on a, on a door that's 72 inch? You can, but given the size of the hinge, the size of the spring, and how you set it, and how much stored energy the spring can release, this is a general guideline of what Bomber has tested it at. Okay, So if you're trying to hang this on a door that's 30 pounds, the bomber is going to say, you've got too much spring power happening there. You need a different hinge. And conversely, if you have a door that's 158 pounds, yeah, you don't have enough spring hinge there. You need a different spring hinge. So this is a guideline. Okay. So what they're saying is on an 18-inch door, might be too much spring. On a 4-foot door, wrong spring hinge altogether. Door flange is surface applied to the face of the door. Jam flange is, jam flange is surface applied to the jam. Could you mortise it? I suppose you could. I don't know why you would. Um, even though you could. You could, if you wanted to. Um, I would discourage you from doing that. You would mortise it so shallow that it, it really wouldn't give you any advantage. Um, do not use on doors with a hinge edge beveled. Hinge edge beveled. So really interesting. I had a client call about six months ago and say, you know, I just I bought these hinges from you. They're great hinges. I there's something wrong with them though. They're there's they're bent or they're broken. Something's wrong. And uh, the client had a pair of pair of doors. And you know, just to draw this really quick, he had a door like this, then his other door was like this. He couldn't get them aligned. Well, in the bomber installation instructions, they tell you when you have this scenario, tension collar goes up on one and tension collar points down on the other. And the client said, yes, I, I, that's absolutely how I installed them. 
And he says, should I shim them? And I says, well, yeah, I suppose you could shim them if your, you know, if your jam, if your jam itself is toed, twisted, not true plumb level and square, if this, if that jam is actually like this, that's going to make your door go like this. And he says, no, the frame is square. I've measured it. It's true everywhere. I've measured it diagonally. I've, I've put a laser level on it. I know it's correct. I says, well, gosh, maybe shimming is what you're going to need to do. And then I said to him what it didn't occur to me to ask because it's too obvious, I think. I said to the client, are you sure your door edge is square? He says, I don't know. Let me check. Well, it turned out he had a beveled edge door. He put his framing square on it, and he had a beveled edge door. And he was very grateful. So I said, get your planer out. Make that beveled edge door. Make that a square edge door. He did. Worked perfectly. Okay. Unfortunately, the margin between the two doors was a little heavy because he had built the opening based on the size of the doors. But nonetheless, who really cares? Well, I mean, I care. But does it, at the end of the day, does it really matter? And he could have padded that out a little over here and a little over here to bring those two doors closer together. But it was a beveled edge door. And that's where that comes in. Packed with all wood screws, permits the door to open in either direction and automatically return to a closed position. Adjustable spring tension permits power and speed adjustment. No hanging strip is needed. Now, what is a hanging strip? Other manufacturers... Uh, other manufacturers who basically make clones of the bomber platform, these manufacturers require what's called a hanging strip. And I, okay, this one doesn't require it. It might be on a pivot where it's required from other manufacturers. Well, what they're saying is <clears throat> because of the design, and maybe it might be <clears throat> a result of a patent perhaps, but a hanging strip is basically where you have your jam, and then because of the design of the hinge, you literally need a piece of wood there to attach your hinge to to get it to double act. Okay, so Bomber is saying you don't need a hanging strip with this hinge. I'm not doing a very good job describing what it is, but nonetheless, oh, it could have been transatlantic. These are old, I believe these are really old transatlantic hinges. What's shown here? Or Parker. Yeah, the, the bottom line is the design... No, I don't even have it in the site. So some double acting hinges require a hanging strip, um, and I don't see an image that shows us clearly what that is. But the point is, is that this hinge is to be mounted directly to the cased opening frame itself. Tension pins and tension rods are linked to here. You will always get the proper quantity that you need at least. Um, Bomber never misses in including tension pins and tension rods with their hinges. They do uh, a substantial amount of internal quality control to make sure that that never happens. And, uh, and there you go. Now let's switch over to the documents down below. The first one is going to be uh, a link to the product cut sheet. And basically what, the th what this shows us is... the 3023 series in both a standard and a CL. CL is just ball tips. You're going to see the CL model hinge in old cities like New York and Chicago, uh, especially New York. If you're a tourist in New York, you it's really difficult to not bump into bomber hardware. Um, so the only difference is the ball tip. 
Uh, there is a table down below showing all of the sizes, and there is indeed an 8-inch version of it. They give you the maximum weight and width that you can uh, tolerate with these hinges, and it will tell you how many hinges to be using, two or three. Okay, So you can go up to a 4-foot wide door, up to 2-inch thick, that's at least 7 foot tall, as long as it doesn't exceed 143 pounds. Now what if you had a door that's 160 pounds? Is it going to work? Yeah, probably. Um, however, I would simply suggest, now they've got three hinges here, in a case like that, or in any case where there's some gray area involved, I'm going to simply suggest that you add another hinge. Now, and we're going to get to it, bomber hinges, if you're doing three hinges on a door, that third hinge does not go there. It goes here. Okay. If you were to add a fourth hinge, I would be tempted to put it in the middle, but I would probably soldier stack it again and put all three at the top to really carry the weight of the door to keep that door. What does the door want to do when it's you know got a three-quarter inch margin down here? It wants to uh, go like this. 70% of the weight of the door is held and hung by that top hinge, so I would move my hinges up as much as possible. All this hinge is doing is keeping the door in alignment, and having a hinge here versus here, uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather get it as close to the top of the door as possible. So that's what I would recommend. Um, and indeed, you will certainly see that in European uh, type of hinges, and you'll see hinges stacked like this in cruise boats. Uh, why? Well, I'm in Fort Lauderdale and going on a uh, going on a cruise, and here are all these doors with two hinges at the top and one at the bottom. Well, those cruise boats are made in Europe, and that's why they do. <laughs> they're not made in Shreveport. Um, you know, they're made in other countries. So the standard there for hinges is is you know biasing them towards the top. Um, so the point of the matter is, here's a table that you can use. But again, it always starts with what's the door thickness. That's going to dictate what row you're in. Okay, You can see that there's some overlap uh, in terms of, say, inch and a half here or here or here for that matter. But then let the weight rating and door maximum width based on quantity of hinges guide you. I would always suggest... So, in conclusion, hopefully this table is of uh, value to you, of use. Um, and be mindful, again, CL, the only difference is you'll have these decorative tips. Right there. That's the cut sheet. Now let's take a look at the template. And we're going to get into talking about um, dimensionally what the door is. Now this is a 4 inch size and you would really be hard pressed to find anywhere on the hinge where you see 4 inch. You just, you're not going to see 4 inch. Okay. Um, I can't explain the logic. The logic that went into naming these hinges is probably logic that's 100 years old. And having looked through lots of old catalogs, um, the terminology that they use, um, the basic perspective on hardware is inherently evolved. So terminology that we would use or understandings that we might have are inherently different. I can't tell you why they would call it a four inch hinge. You know, they might, you know, well, it's three and five eighths. You know, don't call it that, just call it four inch. We know what you want, it's the four inch hinge. Just call it a four inch, who knows? I, I don't know. Um, so there, but there's something to it. The way that we know it today, again, it translates to door thickness. If you've got an inch and an eighth door, probably use a four inch hinge. So that's what's showing us that door thickness range. Anyway, on these dimensions, should you want to know what they are? Here they are for you along with the locations of the holes for the screws. Documents from 1998, it's the year 2020. They don't change often, as you can see. Stuart Jackson is still the engineer at Bomber, who is an irreplaceable source of tech technical support, irreplaceable. Uh, the next document is going to be installation instructions. Um, true. But technical specifications is better um, for us to look at. But let's look, let's look at installation instructions first. Really, all that they're showing us here is how they want you to treat the top of the door when you have more than two hinges. Literally put it up at the top. That's all of the value of this, except telling you where to put the bottom hinge as well. Then, 
There's the technical specifications. This is the document that's included with the hardware. Um, so, back to the uh, back to the technical drawing. Point one eight two, so three sixteenths of an inch. When you stack the leaves together, three sixteenths. That's going to be important to know. Let's take a look at that in that technical drawing, I suppose. So just to point out the obvious, they are certainly showing this, um, how you would install it, but they show that flange on either side. Again, you can't flip the flanges around. There is a dedicated door flange and a dedicated jam flange. And the, how we know that is right here, they're saying tension holes on top, tension holes on bottom. Okay, that's what the hinge should look like. Okay. The fact that a hanging strip is not needed is because of how these leaves are bent to pull that knuckle off of the cased opening frame itself. Otherwise, a hanging strip would be right in here to build that off, which is nice that you don't need a hanging strip. An Ultra does have a model with a hanging strip. I just don't recall what it is um, because it would give you a really large gap between the edge of the door and the frame. Now, if you recall, it was 3 sixteenths from the back side of the leaf to the front side of the door. Uh, of the, um, of where the door pocket is, 3 16 Now, what they're not really giving us here uh, is what to size the doors to. Uh, and let's get to that in a moment. So what they're saying is th there are arrows that are on the barrels, as I showed earlier. When the tension collar is pointed towards the top of the door, you'll rotate that with the tension rod clockwise, and that will increase the tension. When your tension collar is pointed on the bottom or towards the floor, you rotate it counterclockwise. These cells are for uh, tension collar towards the bottom. These cells are tension collar pointed towards the top. And that's what your installation will look like. And they're again telling you tension adjustment down on this side, tension adjustment up. That's how that's going to look. The direction of arrow to increase. Now, what they're not giving us is how large to make the doors and frames. Well, to, to, meaning how what size to size them at. So, you know, if you ha let's just say that you have a single door, the same logic applies. So we know that we're going to have three sixteenths gobbled up from here to here. It's going to be three sixteenths. Okay, that door is going to sit in here. Well, now you've got your frame over here. The question becomes is, what margin do you leave this at? Meaning, if you have a, if you have a clear opening dimension, what's going to be your net door size? Well, it really depends on what you're going to do over here. And what I mean by that is, are you going to leave it like this? Or are you going to leave it like that? So if you're going to radius the edge of the door, and generally a two inch, ra uh, pardon me, generally an inch and a half radius would work. For that, that makes a really large roundover bit. But if you're going to break that edge with that radius, you'd be able to bring that down to a, a eighth of an inch for sure. However, depending on the door thickness, but for this hinge, leaving it at three sixteenths as well would work. So three sixteenths here, three sixteenths here. Take your finished opening minus three eighths, and that would be your net door width square edges. I would be tempted to leave an eighth of an inch at the header, and I'd be tempted to leave a standard undercut at the floor as well. Radiusing or rounding over the door is not going to accomplish very much at all, uh, but it will it will find you a little bit of, uh, of room there. So depending on, on what you're going to do over here, that's how you're going to determine your size. Um, on their 3029 hinges, it's interesting, they have all that formula uh, on their paperwork uh, laid out for us. So really all that's left here is then to secure the hinges to the jam and then get your door in the opening uh, shim everything shims at the bottom shims between the doors if there's a pair just get it positioned and shimmed correctly to where you like it 
mark your holes, pre-drill your holes, and then run your screws in. At that point, um, there's no tension on the hinges, obviously, because otherwise you wouldn't get the, you wouldn't really get, you know, it would, would be a lot harder to install the hinge to the jam with the tension applied. So once you have the door in place, I would probably add some tension, you know, maybe two or three holes on each of them, and then very carefully remove all your shims, being sure not to damage your door anywhere. Because without the tension, the door will literally just flop down. Um, and you don't want that. Very carefully, very gingerly, then test your door. And what I mean by that is, uh, is the following. You have your door. You have your jam. You're going to want to test the door. But you're not sure how much tension you've set. What you don't want the door to do is to be able to come out of the opening when you're cycling it back and forth so that it strikes the jam here. So really nice and slow. Really nice and slow. And when you're sure you've got the right tension, you're going to want to um, fully test the door to make sure that you have it properly properly set. Okay. Now the question becomes is how many holes of tension? One hole of tension is recommended for the bottom hinges. You know, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't see that being too troublesome. Uh, tension holes. Let's read here now. Remove spring hinge uh, installation. Remove the tension from each of the barrels by inserting tension rod and pulling out the pins. Locate your hinges as shown in Figure One. Get them installed is what they're saying. Align center line of door with center line of frame and secure the frame leaf. Yeah, this all needs to be centered. The door, the hinge, the jam. For best alignment of double doors, one side tension collar up, one side down. Now, here's the magic dimension, or the magic information. Place doors in closed position. Wedge door up from bottom until it's plumb. Insert tension rod. Rotate in direction of arrow as shown on figure two or three. Only one hole of tension is recommended for bottom hinges. So they're saying... Don't exceed five holes of tension, and that's assuming 90 degrees. Um, I have had clients, I have had clients who have wanted to build a frame so small that they could take that door. And really move it to 180 degrees. Um, if you're going to try to swing it beyond 90, make four holes your maximum amount. And I explained to the client you'd have to, you know, reduce the tension to the point where, because what they wanted to do, I think, was to have the doors normally double act, but then have them pulled back and then hooked to the wall so that they're out of the way when cleaning was happening, like a hold open version. Um, and I don't know how that worked out with them reducing the amount of tension. Um, I just didn't get a follow-up call back. So f don't exceed five holes. If you hear creaking on the hinge, uh, definitely consider the possibility of too much tension set. I've had customers call me and say, yeah, your hinge is broken. What do you mean? I just sent it to you. And all oh, the spring broke. And I see where this is going because I've, you know, I've, I've, I've been to this drive-in theater before, and I know how the, I know, I, I know what plays before the movie comes on about popcorn and pop and the concession stand. I said to the client, how many holes of tension did you have set on the hinge? I don't know, 10 or 12? So <laughs> I knew why it broke. I just made him say the words. This right here is why it broke. Okay. If you've got to go beyond five hinges, uh, holes of tension, you've got the wrong hinge. Okay. So be mindful of that. Um, and then at that point, we've covered everything here. Top, uh, increased tension on the top hinges if door sags or return action is too slow. Um, you know, there you go. How much play, how, how much benefit the increasing the tension on the bottom hinge will really give you? I don't think it's going to give you much uh, at all. And I think that it might actually serve to make the door not operate uh, so that it operates truly plumb as it goes through its open to close to open to close cycle. I probably wouldn't want to contort that spring any more than necessary. That's the job of what's happening up here. Uh, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, if 
if increasing that to three holes of tension had any impact at all. Now, below this video here is a link to the manufacturer's page, and from there, we can pull up the manufacturer's page in our site, which is here, where we can see not only all of the bomber products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product category or catalog. I would certainly recommend that you review the product catalog because it will give you a handy way to be able to look at all things bomber hinge related, not only double acting spring hinges, but single acting and then other variants of hinges as well. When we do a find function on the keyboard for 3023, we're going to find that we're deep in the double acting spring hinge area. Um, and you might like to tour through there. Okay, 3023 goes to the 3024, which is a clamp style here. If you want to bolt that door to the hinge, you'd use a clamp style. I have a client who buys very large uh, double acting clamp style hinges from us in an 8 inch size. Um, and they're clamp style because of the um, because of the weight and the width of the door. Okay, this uh, the same client is actually um, ordered the 3044 version, um, not the 3024 version, because they have exceptionally heavy doors. <clears throat> and if you check out this 3044, <clears throat> bomber is going to get you to a 320 pound weight rating on a five foot wide door. And if you've got a standard or 3.0 or 3.6, hundreds of pounds of weight on here with four hinges, hundreds of pounds. So Bomber can do the big stuff and it's right here. This is a, an industrial factory they use them in where there is a furnace application, some sort of process that they're doing where high heat is involved and they've got doors that serve to close off that area. Um, and what goes along with double acting doors? Well, double acting door bumpers. These are big giant pieces of steel that if you've got cart traffic going through a pair or a single door and you can just bump your cart against that and just get the door to move out of your way. Then other double acting spring hinges, quite light duty, uh, etc. Lots of variants on that. Let's wrap up this video on camera. In conclusion, the name Bomber is synonymous with single and double acting spring hinges. And if you know their name at all, it probably is for a double acting spring hinge, the 3029 series, which is just the <clears throat> leafs that mount to the door pocket here and then to the jam. If you've been in a restaurant and you saw a double acting door with hinges that look just like this, it's probably a Bomber product. Uh, the name Bomber is synonymous not only with single and double acting spring hinges, but other hinges as well. Industrial, commercial, full mortise, half surface, half mortise, full surface, on and on. Raised barrel, wide throw, um, swing clear hinges, anchor hinges, you know, uh, on and on. Lavatory hardware as well, uh, they make. They're also synonymous with that data right above their logo. It says Made in USA. The bomber name is synonymous with Made in the United States. Other manufacturers hinges have their logos on them and above their logo it will say USA. Doesn't mean it's made in the United States. Doesn't mean it's not. But when Bomber says made in USA, it's made in North Carolina and plated in South Carolina. I believe that the plating plant is just south of that border. Uh, a fact that Bomber is quite proud of as am I to represent them. A uh, company that's been in business since 1876 and I hope they continue for another 145 years. Any questions on the 3023-4-633 uh, half surface double acting spring hinge or any other bomber product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.